I want to talk about life. Not life as we see it today, but life as God intended it to be. We receive a lot of letters in our office, and, and, uh, and some of them are asking for help. A lot of them, to be honest with you, are just thank yous for uh, finding their own freedom and their own identity and life in Christ. Uh, one of the letters that came to me, I, I just put in the beginning of my recent book, Letting Go of Fear. Fear, by the way, is the number one uh, mental disorder in the world today. And she said, in 36 years, for as long as I can remember, I've been plagued with fears and anxieties. I was raised in an abusive family, lived under the threat of even worse treatment if ever told. In the bondage of fear, I decided never to tell anyone. I came home one evening and found everyone gone. I was gripped with fear and crawled under my bed. Why weren't they home? Did they think I told someone? What would happen when they came back? I could never enjoy the simple little things that accompany childhood. My anxieties and fears followed me wherever I went. I was too afraid to try out for anything uh, where I could possibly fail and I dreaded every exam. My stomach would turn and tie up in knots from anxiety. I became a perfectionist who had to achieve at whatever the cost. This pattern of fear continued into my teenage years and young adult life. I tried to accept uh, Jesus twice but I feared not being good enough. I feared the rejection and ridicule of others, so I tried to keep everyone happy. Even sleep offered no reprieve. The nightmares I suffered as a result of the abuse of my childhood continued into my adult years. I'm a parent now, and I fear for my children. Am I an adequate mother? Will my children be hurt or abducted? I know this is robbing me of the life I want to live, but I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm living two lives. On the outside, I appear to be a successful teacher, wife, mother, contributing member of society. But if people could see the condition of my soul, they would notice only pain, anxiety, and fear. Can somebody help me? Can I help myself? Or is this what life was supposed to be? No, it is not what life was supposed to be. At least not in the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. And we look upon it today through the Hubble telescope and we just stand absolutely mesmerized by the expanse of the universe. There are stars out there so big it would make our sun look like a little bitty dot. And all of these planets and, and galaxies and, and dark spots and dark holes and, and supernovas that are around, there's one thing that's true about all of it. They're all lifeless. They're all devoid of life. Maybe our planet and other planets and others like it possibly have biological life. But it's inevitable that all biological life is simply going to die. And it has to have some way to reproduce itself. So it sows the seed or some means of, of reproduction. And then God did something totally unique. God, the mind behind the universe. He took a hunk of clay and breathed into it the breath of life. And Adam was alive. Alive how? Physically. His soul was in union with his body, but he was alive spiritually. His soul was in union with God. That's the kind of life that we're going to talk about. It's that life that Adam lost. It's that life that Jesus came to give us. So we're going to talk about, uh, in the next few days, and then slides that we show you, we're going to talk about that life and how he has met the most critical needs in our life to know who we are and who are we today we're children of god thanks for following freedom in christ ministries if you enjoyed watching or listening to this teaching please follow and share us on facebook instagram and twitter